Hi everybody, Johnny here with Nine Lives Racing. Today we're making a video and we're going to be covering CFD. And we got a lot of questions over what it all means. And so today we're going to be covering what CFD is, how to read the charts, and how to apply it if you're an autocrosser or a road racer. So let's get to it. So CFD testing is computer fluid dynamics. Right? So that basically means computer fluid. You know, so it's basically using a computer to judge how air is going to be flowing over an object. Um, you know, we use this a lot for race cars, we use it for wings, uh, what have you, a lot in the aerospace industry. Um, and so we are no exception. We had our CFD testing done to prove that the wing actually works uh, because, I mean, frankly, who's going to buy something that doesn't work, right? And so we had our CFD testing done by a company called Emissive. Now, Emissive is a independent engineering firm. We basically said these are the speeds that we wanted to test. This is the wing that we use. And, um, you know, basically just said go to town and give us back the results. And they did that completely unbiased. And so to see the CFD numbers, we're going to take the little mouser here. Uh, we are on the Nine Lives Racing homepage, and we're going to click on the CFD test. Um, and that brings up our CFD page. Now, this is all the data, all the information that we got. Um, we tested our wing at 70 inches wide. Uh, and it's not always, we sell them up to 71, so the chart, the numbers can get a little better. Um, and that's our nine and a half inch cord, and without a gurney flap. Uh, and I'll kind of tell you what a gurney flap is. It's a, so on the back of these wings, see if we can get, see that little channel? That is the gurney flap entrance. And so uh, it's something that we're going to be coming up with. We don't have it currently. Uh, or it depends on when you're watching this video. Maybe we got it now. Uh, check the website. And it just slides right in there. It's a little flap like that. And it's named after Dan Gurney, uh, who came up with the idea. And what it does is it, helps the air stay attached to the bottom of the wing and actually increases the speed of the air going underneath it. Because how you make downforce is you take the wing, you need fast over the top, uh, no, reverse it. You want slow over the top and you want fast underneath. That difference in pressure is what creates the negative lift. Um, and so a gurney flap is a little, literally a little wall. It sits right on the back of that and it slows the air down and it increases the efficiency. So, but we tested ours without it because that's how they come standard. Uh, and so these numbers are all without the gurney flap. And the way to look at this, right? So we got a whole bunch of numbers, a whole bunch of graphs. All of these are basically just different ways of looking at the same chart. Um, so we're gonna look at this picture first. This is the actual way the air flows over the way. Uh, you can see, Underneath that, this is pressure, right? So the way a wing works is it creates a high, you know, a uh, high pressure on top, high pressure, slow air, low pressure underneath, and that difference in pressure of these two bits of air fighting uh, is what's going to produce the negative lift. <clears throat> um, and so that's that's that guy. So we're going to just flip through. Um, not really talk about drag yet. So this is downforce versus velocity. Now, we always get the question of, uh, I want a wing that's good for this, that's good for that. Um, tell you the truth, how you tell a wing is good or bad is off the drag to lift ratio. Um, because honestly, every, everything in aerodynamics is, is scalable. Uh, so, if it, you know, so we got the question a couple weeks ago of, I want a wing that's good for autocross. Oh. Everything's scalable. So as you uh, go faster, the wing's going to work better. So if it's working really good at that autocross speeds, it's going to work really great at road race speeds. So it's that kind of difference. Um, and so we have the chart here. And on this chart, how you tell a wing is good or bad, because it's all scalable, is the lift to drag ratio. Um, ours goes up to 15.2 to 1. Uh, that's dang near industry leading. Um, so that's a really great lift to drag ratio. <clears throat> um, but that's what you're looking for because I mean, you could take a piece of wood, stick it out because that's what most spoilers are to take a piece of wood, stick it out in the air like that. It's going to make downforce. It's going to make a ton of drag 
but what you want is that good lift to drag ratio. That's what makes a wing better than a piece of wood. Uh, so we're kind of going to get back down into here. Now this is downforce versus velocity. And what I want you to do is think about your lap. Think about the racing that you're doing. Uh, we'll use our car as an example because we have so many laps around Road Atlanta. Right here is the mile per hour, right? And everybody looks at this and they think of it like a dyno graph. And they go right up to the fastest speed they possibly can think of and the maximum amount of downforce that's making. And they go, oh man, this thing makes, you know, at 140 miles an hour, uh, this thing's making 375. You know, the people ask, what's your maximum downforce? Like, well, if we go 200 miles an hour, we'll be way over 700 pounds downforce. So, so it's, uh, you know, we can make a lot of downforce if we have a lot of speed, but that doesn't necessarily make the wing good. Um, so what you're looking at here is you want to think about your lap and you want to think, what's my average speed, right? So take a moment, think about that. Now for us, we're going to use Road Atlanta and we go, okay, our average speed is about 89 miles an hour. Now take the, the turn that you're having the problems with and think about the speed of that turn, right? So for us, the biggest, scariest turn at Road Atlanta is the last turn, turn 12. Uh, it's, and we got to take it flat and we don't have a lot of tire. So it's always a challenge. We make it up and down for us. And so we sit here and we go, okay, that turn for us is 117 miles an hour, right? And so, you know, at zero AOA, we're making 150 pounds of downforce uh, at that turn. Now, that's, I don't know about you guys, putting 150 pounds on the trunk of the car, you're going to notice it. You know, you put 200 pounds on the trunk of the car, you're going to notice it even more. Um, but we were finding that on our car, a AOA, um, of about one degree was bringing a balance to the car. And that was a balance. Uh, so what a balance is, is equal arrow load on the front and the rear. And we had uh, on the front a normal splitter, three inches long. Uh, it goes back to the front axle on a Miata. Pretty standard, almost what everybody does. Um, and, we're, and we have that angle at about a one degree AOA. Uh, and we, found, we were finding that about 120 pounds of downforce in the back was bringing a good balance to the car. Uh, add more front, uh, add more front downforce. You can add more rear, bring more down, you know, more overall grip. And that's how you make a monster. Uh, but yeah, we can see right here. That's where we were sitting right there and we we're pretty happy with it. So that's how you read the chart. Now I might've skipped over this, but AOA, right? So some of you might be thinking, what's AOA? What's, what's this guy on about? So AOA, so you got your wing, right? Try to get it on the screen. There you go. Now it's against my hat. And so now AOA is this measurement right here, right across the top of the wing, right? So this angle, try to get the, there you go. So this angle, this is how we measure AOA. So this is zero, you know, five would be like that. And then of course, 10 would be a little bit more. Uh, we measure our AOA differently than everybody else. Uh, and we do this for a reason. We measure it straight across. We include the wicker um, and we put it like that. And we do it. Well, the reason we do that is for when you go to the track, you don't want to bring extra special tools. You know, <laughs> we don't want, you don't need a tool that sits on the wing in a certain way so that you can get the AOA. No, we do it that way. So that way you can bring any angle finder uh, to the track and get your AOA. So you know what you're working with. So you can put it down your logbook a lot easier. We're racers too. And that's how we build it. And so, uh, so yeah, that's how you measure that. Uh, now, before I was talking about uh, about lift to drag ratio. Now, this is the big deal when it comes to wings is where the air starts to separate. On the back of the wing, so let's get the front. So air is going to travel along the front of the wing. And air separation is when the air goes whoop, and it just disconnects from the back of the tire, back of the wing. Uh, back here, then the air will start to loop you start doing things like this and start doing little circles and that's just drag and starts killing your lift to drag ratio and you can see right here that the chart that these two lines aren't very separated under downforce but down here they are these are both the same aoas um, you can see that it does pick up a little bit more downforce but picks up a ton more drag um, and that's because the air is separating without a gurney flap at about eight to de eight degrees of aoa um, and frankly, we were saying that one, you need a heck of a lot of 
front downforce to balance the car out to be running eight. Uh, if you got that, fantastic. We're going to, you know, throw a gurney flap on there and you'll be, this number will start to, uh, this drag number will start to come down quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, so keep that in mind. Now for autocrossers, you think, okay, my lap speed is 60 miles an hour. That's about as fast as we ever go. Well, drag for autocrossers doesn't mean that much. Uh, let's see if I can click over and get the drag down for us. So there we go. So here's the drag versus velocity. So you're at 60 miles an hour. You know, this is like three, five, and probably seven. Uh, the difference when the air is separating right here is three pounds of drag. I mean, that's almost non-existent. You pop up headlights, your mirrors are going to give you more than three pounds of drag. So it's, you know, for you guys, you worry a lot less about air separation. You know, you, you probably sit there and go, yeah, I, I want that extra couple pounds of downforce. So you put more AOA into it. So that's kind of how to read these charts. And, and uh, pay attention when you're driving. Because a lot of times when you're going through a turn, uh, you know, I like to say the car won't turn. Um, and that's more of a racer term. The car will turn. But you got to be you to be saw, fighting at that wheel a lot. You're gonna be sawing at it and trying to get that front end to come back. It's probably because you have too much AOA in the car. Start taking some AOA out of that wing, bring it down, or start adding more front downforce and try to bring that front nose into uh, into a line. Other than that, you know, it's been 11 minutes. It's uh, covered a lot of information. If you are confused still or you have any more questions drop us a line. Uh, this video is going to go onto the web page. So if you're on the web page, jump over to home and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and contact us. Fill in your question right here. We'd be happy to help you out. Uh, if it's on YouTube or Facebook or what have you, then just go ahead and just put your comment right in the bottom. Uh, we'll be happy to answer it for you. Other than that, that's it for me. Thanks, guys. You've been great. All right, bye.